Um, if you think about the Middle East right now, think about all the conflicts in the Middle East right now. We've got, uh, we've got Hamas. Uh, Hamas uh, and, and the Palestinians uh, attacking Israel and Israel defending itself. Hamas. Uh, Hamas could not attack Israel without Iranian funding, without Iranian uh, arming, and without Iranian, um, actual Iranian, uh, uh, you know, support uh, in terms of even uh, training and how to use drones, electronic warfare that made October 7th possible. Uh, Hamas is, and, and the whole Palestinian war against Israel at this point is pretty dead without dramatic Iranian support. And there's no question that the Iranians were part of uh, you know, the, the, the planning and the decision to execute on, uh, on October 7th. If you go further north to the Israeli-Lebanon uh, border, which is, could any day uh, turn into a ground war, but right now is just each side bombing each other in a tit-for-tat type situation. Hezbollah, Hezbollah is a, is a, is a branch of the Iranian uh, basically, Revolutionary Guard. Hezbollah it, it was founded by the Iranian uh, Secret Service. It was founded uh, by Iranians. It's being funded and receives its marching orders to a large extent from Iran. It leads, indeed, it is the largest and most militarily active, or has been, of all, and oldest, because it goes back, it goes back to the 1980s, oldest of Iran's uh, puppets, um, and it has, uh, it is on the verge of war uh, with Israel. If you look at Syria, which has been involved in a civil war, God, I, I, I can't remember when it started, but for uh, the last decade or so, 10 years plus, Syria is, uh, is a country that receives the, the regime, which was almost overthrown by various elements, some you could argue worse than the regime, some significantly better than the regime, uh, its only ally has basically been Iran. Iran has been at the, well, Russia ultimately, but originally only Iran. Iran has been at the center of that conflict. They have funded and again supported with troops and in and, uh, and a variety of different other mechanisms. The uh, Assad regime in Syria have permanent, uh, have allowed him uh, to kill his own people, to, to destroy his own country, and ultimately to beat back uh, most of the insurgents who were fighting against him. Uh, Iran has been instrumental in destabilizing Iraq since the United States invaded. The Shiites, who are the majority in Iraq, could have used the opportunity of uh, Saddam Hussein's fall to really establish a relatively free country and, and one run by the Shiite majority, or at least uh, in a parliamentary system, uh, a, a country that could be relatively rich because of its massive uh, quantity of oil that exists in Iraq. Uh, and, and instead, uh, the Iranians have done everything to turn it into a satellite state. And if, and if not, when, when the Iraqis resist, resist becoming a satellite state, to ferment whatever instability and whatever violence they can. And they've, they've done that from from the beginning of the uh, U.S. invasion, and they continue to do that uh, today. A uh, part of that, uh, the American forces in Iraq that are basically there to train the Iraqi army and to continue the fight against uh, elements of al-Qaeda, and particularly ISIS, in Iraq and in, uh, and in Syria, uh, those uh, American bases are being uh, attacked by Iranian-linked militias, that's what they call them anyway, uh, really for well over 10 years now, well into uh, going back, really they were attacked during the Bush administration, then Obama administration, Trump and, and Biden. So all the kind of violence going on in Iraq and in Syria, to a large extent, Iran has its hands in it. The final area of conflict that one has to look at is the Houthis in, uh, in Yemen. The Houthis in Yemen are again a puppet funded, supported, trained, armed by the Iranian regime. 
They are also, in this case, Shiite. The only one of these parties that is not Shiite is Hamas, but everybody else is Shiite, the same sect of Islam as Iran. Um, and, and they have been devastating Yemen with a civil war for many, many years, and now, of course, threatening the sea lanes in the, uh, in the Red Sea and up into the Suez Canal. In every conflict in the Middle East, Iran isn't just dabbling, isn't just, you know, helping a little bit here and there. Iran is at the core of it. Iran is the source of the violence, the mayhem, the destruction in every single one, every single area in the Middle East that is in flames, Iran is the source of those flames, the source, the inspiration, the ideological inspiration. Note that all these groups, with the exception of the Syrian regime, all of them are Islamist, jihadist, Sharia law imposing. All of them are inspired by Iran, funded by Iran, armed by Iran, provided training by Iran, strategy of Iran. Now, the obvious conclusion for this should be that the only way to bring peace to the Middle East, the only way to bring peace to the Middle East, and I believe this has been true for 40 years, but it's certainly true over the last 20, since 9-11, it was, and it's certainly true today, the only way to bring peace to the Middle East is the absolute destruction of the Iranian regime. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Everybody wants to evade that fact. Everybody wants to pretend that is not true. Everybody wants to, to, to delude themselves to thinking, oh no, we can deal with the Houthis separate from Iran. We can deal with the militias separate from Iran. We can deal with Hezbollah separate from Iran. We can deal with Hamas separate from Iran. You cannot. Until Iran is liberated from the brutal theocracy that they have, this will continue. Or if it's impoverished enough, right? If it's destroyed economically. But that's the one thing no administration has been willing to touch. Yes, we had a, a sanctions on Iran. But there are lots of countries that violate sanctions, and Iran was still bringing money more today than ever before. Uh, but did we destroy the oil facilities? That would completely eviscerate their capability of earning a living. No, we, we never touched it. Even as they, by the way, attacked, a major refining operation in Saudi Arabia with drones. I can't remember how many years ago. They were flown by the Houthis, but basically by Iranian command. Even then, nobody attacked Iranian oil facilities. Do we destroy their capacity to build drones even? Drones that are used by everybody. Every bad guy in the world today has Iranian drones. Oh no, God forbid we do that. So uh, the Bush administration evaded, if you remember, Leonard Peikoff's four-page ad in the New York Times and the Washington Post right after 9-11 declared Iran the enemy and that no solution was possible without taking out Iran. And that was true over and over and over again in the Bush administration, the Obama administration, in the Trump administration, and in, now in the Biden administration again. Obama, Trump, Biden, all tried to negotiate with Iran to no avail. I mean, Obama had a deal, but a horrible deal. The immorality of our leadership, the immorality of our leadership that sticks its head in the sand, that pretends it's doing something, is outrageous, truly outrageous, and I think is indicative of how weak and pathetic and how cowardly American leadership is today, and the, the fact that American has no, no strategic vision, no foreign policy, uh, no way in which to defend the individual rights, the, 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 
the lives of Americans going into the future. It's just, America's just gonna hand the world over to the Putins, the Khamenei's, and the Xi's of the world. And, and God, it doesn't matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat, as you can see with these, this immigration bill, they're all basically don't care. They, 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 they're looking at the navel, they're gazing at the navel, they're gazing at the next election. They care about uh, electoral politics. They care nothing, not zero, for the well-being of this country and what is necessary for this country to thrive and succeed. Again, true of Republicans and Democrats, nothing. It's sad, pathetic, horrific.